People should go to jail, but it's not illegal. It's a, an enormous robbery. It's a huge transfer of wealth. This is how the rich get richer. Yes. They know, they're connected. A lot of times they're coordinating. This right. is not illegal to do. Nobody's ever been arrested for anything so like this. So now, people, they all hang out together. They all think alike. It doesn't right. have to be calling each other. Yeah. They just, they know this game. Yes. The last time I saw something like this was back during 1994 to 1995. In the, in the early uh, to mid-90s, individuals were making just enormous amounts of money buying companies like Dell, AOL, Microsoft, uh, Netscape, and some of these smaller internet stocks. And the institutions had completely missed that bull market. And so they were scoffing at these so-called lemmings. And so during 1994 to 1995, we had a bit of a bear market. And so, again, institutions were out saying that, oh, anybody buying internet stocks, you're idiotic. And so you had a lot of people selling their AOL, selling their Microsoft, selling their Dell shares. Guess who was buying? It was the institutions. If you look at a chart of institutional allocation to uh, venture capital internet deals, it doubled between 1994 to 1995, which was exactly when institutions were saying, oh, this is just a market for idiots. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be buying this stuff. Mm -hmm. So they, they literally stole all this wealth that should have been in the hands of individuals that own Dell, Microsoft, and AOL. And then from 1995 to 2000, of course, you know, we saw $5 trillion come into the market and the biggest bull market we've ever seen. So this blueprint of creating fear in order to get cheap prices is, is nothing new. And then the dot-com crash in 03, if you can go back and look at old CNBC clips during 03, yes. even as the market was starting to come up, oh, don't buy tech stocks, no, they're evil, don't buy tech stocks, don't buy tech stocks. But institutions, if you looked at the 10Ks, the Qs, and all of the filings, the quarterly filings, they were all loading up. This is how the rich get richer. Yes. They know they're connected. A lot of times they're coordinating yes. uh, without the insider trading. This right. is not illegal to do. No, the um, manipulating the news cycle, if yes. you're smart about it, is, is right. they can get away with it. Nobody's ever been arrested for anything like so this. So now, with crypto, yes, I know personally, I know people that would have gotten in or stayed in right. if these people weren't saying what they're saying. On September 12th, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire any one of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen. People listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he'd buy anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying his it. His company is buying it. So, it's just, I mean, so unethical. Right. George Soros, in he January 24th, <laughs> price was already down, calls Bitcoin a bubble, says Bitcoin is the worst, you know, the worst investment in the world. Don't buy Bitcoin. Don't buy Bitcoin. Basically, he throws uh, gasoline on the fire yeah. at this point. And then what do we find out? So he says, bubble here. It drops 44%. Right. And then here in April, for two months later, guess what we find out? Yeah. His $26 billion family office has approval to buy cryptocurrency. George Soros is famous for this, talking yeah. the sterling down. Yeah. And what did he do? He stole the pensions of all the little people. Yeah, made a billion. Yeah. Okay. So then here now, Goldman Sachs, this again, February 7th. Most cryptocurrencies will crash to zero. Now, I remember when they said this in February, and I had, through my network, I knew that Goldman Sachs was setting up a crypto trading desk. Absolutely knew they were setting up a crypto trading desk. Uh, of course, they were denying it. No, yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah. No, we're not. No, we're not. Yeah. Price falls down 27%. And then what do we find out? We find out here 
uh, they say BTC zero, and then we find out just before May, new trading desk. Not only that, they put $400 million to buy a cryptocurrency trading platform. And this was, what's funny about this, Glenn, is it was all around the same time. It yeah. was almost like the, I can't prove collusion, but you know, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck. And, and you know what? It's probably a duck. The people, they all hang out together, they all think alike. It doesn't right. have to be calling each other. Yeah. They just, they know this game. Yes. One of the key lessons I learned from being involved in the market so long is rather than uh, listening to what people are saying, look at what they are doing. Correct. So this is what we should look at, and this is what I want people to focus on now. Billionaire hedge fund manager Stephen Cohen, who's worth between 12 to $14 billion, by far the smartest hedge fund manager in the world, I would say of the last century, is buying Bitcoin. $6,800 buying Bitcoin. Mark Lazary, Avenue Capital Group, worth about $1.7 billion, has put 1% of his net worth into Bitcoin at around this price, $7,500. Andresen Horowitz. Mark Andreessen. That's right, Mark Andreessen. An early investor in Airbnb, Skype, Facebook, just launched yeah, a 300, yeah, and Coinbase just launched a $300 million fund. Wellington Capital, they have a trillion dollars in assets, are starting to get involved in Bitcoin futures. Susquehanna, the 12th largest trading firm by volume, they now have their own Bitcoin custody department, their own trading department, and they're trading Bitcoin and Ethereum. Goldman Sachs, this new CEO, David Solomon, the most pro Bitcoin slash cryptocurrency guy on Wall Street. The most pro Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. He's the new CEO. He's coming yep. into power shortly. BlackRock, this announcement just came out. The world's biggest asset manager. Now, last year, Larry Fink says, Oh, you know what cryptocurrency and Bitcoin's good for? Yeah. Money laundering and yeah. drug dealers. Right. Right. So, again, you, if you look at what he's saying, you're going to sell your Bitcoin, right? Yeah. You're going to say, oh, this is this is yeah. all BS. But guess what is happening now? They're going to launch an ETF. They're looking at an exchange traded fund right. that will allow you, uh, allow anybody with a brokerage firm to make it as easy as hitting a buy button to go out and buy Bitcoin. So you've got to look at this preponderance of evidence, right? All these people are already wealthy. All these people care about their reputation. If Bitcoin is such a trashy asset, why are all these people getting involved? Congrats, you watched the whole video. Looks like this video is your cup of tea, then consider watching another video. Give like to the video, comment your thoughts down and share to spread the word. Please subscribe to the channel to support and watch more videos. Keep inspiring.